we have what we call the content genre. I've separated content into sort of two uh, mega realms. There's what I call the external content genres, which are all about external forces. And then there are the internal content genres, which are emphasizing internal transformations. So external genres are all about a change in an external uh, domain from beginning to the end. And the internal ones are really about the change of one particular protagonist. So the internal genres are smaller stories because they're about uh, the change of one particular person. Now, obviously, we have dimensionality of externality and internality in all stories. But what we do at StoryGrid is we don't allow people to say, well, it's a little bit of this, it's a little bit of that. It's a... You've got to lock down and, and come to a global genre content choice. Anyway, we've got 12 of them. I'm going to run through the external content genres. And these actually align with, if anyone's familiar out there, with Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which goes to what these particular genres are all about, what what value, what universal human value are these stories uh, aligning with such that they can help Sam confront some problems in her own life concerning these universal values. And again, I'm going to point you toward the four core framework to get more information about value and emotion and all that. All right, so we have action story, war story, horror story, crime, thriller, love story, performance story, Western story, and then society story. Those are our global external genres. And then the internal genres are status, morality, and worldview. Now, there's a lot of information about all of these genres in the Story Grid book and on the website. So I'm going to stop there and ask Tim, which of these genres does he believe eyewitness aligns with? So this is kind of the thought process I went through as I was thinking through the content genre. So my knee-jerk reaction was to put it in crime because of the conventions at play, right? So there's a dead body, there's a detective, there's a witness. But then I started thinking through, well, the witness is scared for his life. He's afraid that if the murderer finds out that he's the one that identifies him. The murderer will come and find him and kill him. And so I'm like, well, if life and death is at stake, then it's an action genre because we always want to go with whatever's lowest on Maslow's hierarchy. But then I went back to, well, the protagonist of the story is actually who we're focused on. We want the value at stake for the protagonist. And the protagonist in this story is Detective Capelli. For Detective Capelli, what he's trying to do is get justice, right? So he's trying to find out who committed the murder so that he can bring uh, the murder to justice. And so that's why I ultimately came back to crime and landed on crime because of identifying the protagonist and what value was at stake for the protagonist, which in this case is justice. Yeah, I, I also love hearing the process. And and I think it's really important because there are a lot of ways to get to a genre. And then by checking the process, we can make sure that it's reproducible. We can make sure that we're considering all the right things that are going into it. I agree that it's crime, but I would have a few tweaks to the process. I think that your your impulse to go as low as possible, the more primal genres is great. When we're addressing global genres like this, what we're looking at is the object of desire more than the stakes. Those are very close. The avatars in this story are trying to achieve justice. Their question is, how can justice be done? Not how can I survive, which would be an action story. Even though life and death is on the table, it's not central to the object of desire. So looking at what they're trying to achieve, I think is just a little bit of a tweak to the way that you're looking at what is at stake. Sometimes you'll have other stories where something is at stake that's more primal than the global genre. So for example, like Pride and Prejudice, a love story, but poverty and economic safety is on the line. So you wouldn't call that an action story just because of the stake, because of what the object of desire is that's driving the arc of the story. So I would say making a little bit of a tweak to that. And then when we're evaluating that 
I think all of the avatars in the story, the detectives, the eyewitness, they're looking at how can they achieve a just outcome. And the main force of antagonism, who's the lieutenant, is looking at how he can escape justice. So I think everyone's looking at the these sort of outcomes and objects of desire related to that central value spectrum. We always want to focus and put the global genre at the top, right? That's the one we pay the most in- attention to, even if in a, you know in a longer form story you would have subplots perhaps and and that kind of thing um but i do see in this story that we have a um a worldview revelation shift that is a it's a secondary and it's the internal that's acting within um within the story and the interesting thing about this is that um is looking at the different ways that worldview can take place in this and our recent discussions about worldview revelation and versus say um, disillusionment or uh, maturation is that the the revelation is pure novelty other flavors of worldview that we're looking at different types of novelty but here it's very novel a uh, very novel novelty, so pure novelty. And so I think that's a really interesting thing that McBain has going on within the story. In masterwork stories, and I consider this a masterwork story because it is extraordinarily clean, simple. The signal is is very tight and fascinating and exactly what someone who would like to know how it works in a police department would would be able to uh, understand very cleanly and clearly. In masterwork stories, what you have is you have a shift of movement across both the external and the internal. So when Leslie was talking about worldview revelation, she was talking about there is a worldview dimensionality in this short story that is very clear. And we understand it uh, especially at the end of the story when it, it really comes on stage. The externality of the story is what gives rise to the internal revelation. So what Tim was saying is when we're looking at a genre, we want to make sure that the value at stake that is the most primal and most clearly definable, that we want to put our attention on that as as an analyzer of a story. Each one of the content genres concerns a specific value, a a universal human value. The action story is about life and death. And I think we'd all agree that we all value life. So life and death is a universal human value. It doesn't matter what part of the planet you live on. If you're a human being, you value your life and you value the lives of others. So the action story operates under that's what can happen. Somebody's life is threatened they're threatened with close to death. So what Danielle was saying was that life and death is on the table, meaning the informant in this case could anticipate getting hurt. That's not really what is driving the scene because nobody walks in with a gun and says, give me your money or I'm going to kill you. That's the literal action scene where death is externally possible in, in an event on the page. And that doesn't happen in this scene. Instead, everyone is playing around the game of how do we get justice? So justice is the value at stake in a crime story. Justice, again, is one of those universal human values. We all have an innate understanding of what's fair. We all have variations of what we think is fair, but we all think, we all know when we've been victimized, right? So fairness is at play in all of our experiences. So we're always weighing, is this a fair deal? Is this this interaction I'm having with this person fair? Is it fair to me? Is it fair to them? Now, we might not, you know, abstractly stick our minds on evaluating fairness, but it's always at play. It's a universal human value. So the crime story is, is that story that deals with that difficult problem of, What's fair? Well, it's context dependent, right? Sometimes things are fair for you to give up, you know, your coat if somebody's freezing and you 
you know, you only have 10 blocks to get home and you have an extra coat at home, you know, it might be fair for you to lose your coat. So fairness is one of these ill-defined problems. And justice, again, is a value that has to do with fairness. So the crime story concerns the universal human value of of what's fair, what's just. So it, it goes along the spectrum of justice, injustice. I definitely agree this is a crime story. 